This video is for entertainment purposes only. Let's roll. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Let's roll. What's up? Okay, so I remember I had a. Uh, <clears throat> my channel doesn't get watched much. You probably didn't see the video anyway, but I pledged that I would um, not buy any more of the uh, extra stuff. I would just save for my electrical, my electric vehicle, my Ford Lightning or my Rivian. But it kind of, I fell off the wagon. Okay, that's what I did. So, anyway, this here came in from Long Island Watch. It is the Seiko Special Edition Prospex Paddy PADI Automatic Dive Watch with Stainless Steel Bracelet. It's uh, The model is SRPE99. And so what it is is a dive watch that was uh, made, I guess, with uh, a logo on it that... Uh, Professional Association of Diving Instructors, or PADI. Their specs, because I just don't know them off the top of my head. There it is. So there it is. I'm a, yeah, okay, good. Got a good unboxing right there. It's kind of shifted on the pillow a bit. Uh, I kind of think it would have been cool on a rubberized band, but someone had a good point on another one of the turtles. I mean, this is the same turtle design, but uh, it said basically that the... Uh, uh, Patty is a, um, um, it's a, it's what they call a band monster, which means is it does well with a lot of different bands. This is like a, it's kind of like a partial Pepsi bezel. Uh, I was just saying in the Rolex world because a lot of times it's known among Rolex watches, but there's other watches that do the two colored bezel too. And this is a Pepsi bezel because of the red and, and, uh, uh, blue but typically when you say Pepsi it's usually referring to a Rolex but but people usually use it outside of the Rolex world to describe other uh, blue and red uh, color combinations on specifically usually specifically on rotating bezels so so this one here of course is a is a uh, unidirectional because it's a it's a dive watch so let me go ahead and just kind of read the go go over the specs here uh, it's a uh, it was, so it was formed an association, so a newly, see, the special edition for Seiko's, so it's a new, so in other words, it's an association with the professional dive, di, professional, so professional association of diving instructors, or PADI, okay, so, um, so they say it's the exact same watch as the SRPA21, but they just changed the model number, the watch has a 45 millimeter cushion style stainless steel case, uh, cushion style, I think, because it has these uh, these undercuts or flares up, and I, the idea behind that is it kind of takes uh, it, it doesn't dig into the to the wrist as much because it'll move it'll kind of allow that wrist to move with the curvature of, of the case. Using the specs here, uh, features a twenty Seiko twenty four jewel automatic. Uh, 4R36 movement with the 41 power 41 hour power reserve fully wound a day a day and date display is at three o'clock so that's the day date which I really like the day date uh, that old older style day date I kind of liked um, usually I never forget the day but I always always forget the uh, the, <laughs> the date and I'll actually always have a date setting usually on all my eye watches. On my eye, well, my eye watches, my eye watch faces. Um, so that's another thing I have to get used to wearing an old analog watch again. <laughs> um, so uh, you'll get highly luminous hands and markers treated with a Luma Bright. Uh, it's a 200 meter water resistance screw down offset crown unidirectional diving bezel with luminous pip at 12 o'clock and a uh, hard lex mineral crystal and a solid etch screw down case now, show you the let me show you some of the tags on here so it comes with the uh, so here it is when it's first on the pillow there's the back i hate it when watch companies don't show what the back and what the writing on the case looks like i don't care who makes it i don't care who it is if I'm selling a watch, 
I'm going to show what it says on the back. I'm going to show the stamping on the back, whether it's an exhibition or a solid. Um, just my preference. So I guess the big thing, too, is these holes for the bands are drilled through. They say that's kind of what makes it, it what they call a, a band monster, meaning there's a lot of bands that will fit this. And so, like I said, that, you know, I kind of... Th thought first I thought this would do better with a silicone band or a rubberized band but in the end it won't matter because I'm probably going to acquire some sort of band anyway that'll fit this model but this is I don't know what this is what does this say does this say anything on here midnight blue archer designed in Venice Beach California made in China okay well anyway uh, these guys are pretty good I like I like their colors they got but anyway I got this thing, and they're kind of cool. The archers, they got a little uh, clasp that you can move over with the pins, so you don't have to change your pins out. It actually has a little snap you can grab with your thumbnail. So what's the? Hmm, I didn't hear a click. No, I guess it's, I guess it's in. Okay. All right, we'll see how that holds up. This side. I just kind of like them. I like the wipe. They're wipe. The wipe more wipeable. Like most of my Invictas, I was buying toward the end. There were rubberized straps. I mean, those Grand Divers were were metal, and I was buying autos. But a lot of times, I would buy a rubberized strap or something that was compatible. I can get aftermarket rubberized straps. That's probably why I like the Grand Diver because I could probably find rubber straps for it later. So this is pretty nice. That you know, laying my wrist out like this, you know, feeling these back cuts. It kind of, kind of, uh, kind of meld into the the hand pretty well. I'm just hoping those pins will hold. This actually might be a kind of a good plug for Archer bands because uh, they might actually, you know, get some play from this. I don't know if they got a presence online or not, but that's a real comfortable band. And I have a Lupa with the same with a leather one they did. I think it's a leather one. I think it's Archer that did it. These are pretty. This is a pretty comfortable watch with this particular band. And I have a, two more bands coming. I have an Islander and a Seiko brand band. But if this proves to be uh, a good band, I might just go ahead and keep a couple changes laying around. Maybe get a red one, get a black one, get a different color one. And I got a perhaps another Seiko coming down the road. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty cool. Kind of curious. They, I noticed that loom. They say that loom lasts a long time for charge. You know. Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna go. Let me go grab a couple other watches, and we'll have a look and compare the different different ones. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing. I had it set a minute ago, but I decided to go ahead and set it on camera. So it's kind of cool. It uh, appears to be hacking. I didn't see any you know literature that came with it but of course the crown's down a 20 o'clock position instead of coming straight out that's kind of what drew me to this watch i've had watches in the past with straight up crowns that you know if i do a lot of prolonged work where i'm pushing stuff the crowns i've had crowns actually dig into my hands and this being a little bit off seems like kind of a good design cue all right so let's see uh so anyways it's a screw down i'll unscrew the crown it pops up. I pull it out, and it seems to be what's called uh, uh, hacking. In other words, the the uh, the the uh, second stops the, when I pull the crown out. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna go. Let's see here. So let's see. Saturday, 24th. That's the date today. So, anyways, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and scramble this. Uh, this date a little bit Let's scramble that date and then uh, okay so anyway let's see here today is the uh, Friday the 23rd okay so I'm gonna go with uh, so let's see I go so I'm gonna go uh, this way so I guess that would be counterclockwise. 
I'll go up to the 22nd. Two. Then I go clockwise. So this is the dates now Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, Thursday. Now pull all the way out. And so I'll go ahead and bring it up to midnight. That's how I like to do it. I like to go past midnight, past noon. That'd be noon, 22nd. That should be approaching midnight. So you see the change? Can you see the change? I'm going to zoom in here real quick. So the change is coming. There's midnight. Comes the 23rd which is today. Ju. Uh, whatever reason, some of these Japanese watches have a Spanish prefix. So, and then I go, I think it's around, I want to say it's around here, switches to Friday. So that's midnight Friday, come around to 6 a.m. Going past Noon, six PM, nine. And then what's the time? Yeah, approximately a little after ten thirty. Okay, so ten, ten o'clock, ten. What is it now? Ten thirty one thirty two thirty three ten thirty three okay all right starting again and then I push the crown all the way down large threads will catch it now I'll screw the crown down let me see if I can get more of a positive Yeah, those large threads catch it. There he goes. It's going in now. It screws. And it'll screw the crown down. Okay, so you see how it screw, unscrews? Sorry, guys. Got out of camera for a bit. And then it pop it in. Screws. All right, so. All right. So then I'll go ahead and put this on, and I will wear it tomorrow throughout the day and see how this thing pans out. The only thing I'm nervous, ever nervous about with a band, is is this thing here periodically coming loose and dropping the watch. That's the only thing I'm worried about. But it'll be actually a good chance to see how it how it holds time because it has a bit of a power. I forgot what the power reserve is on it. But we'll go ahead and see how that plays out, and I'll con and I'll and I'll look at it uh, compared to tomorrow's time. We'll see how that goes, and I'll compare the two and see how they go. I'll probably resync it. You know, I'll, I'll pull the digital display up over here and resync it, and see how much time it loses. So I don't know. I don't think I did anything by uh, hammering those that band, but I screwed that band up bad. Oh yeah, I forgot. A uh, unidirectional bezel. I, mean, I should, probably should show you the bezel. There's been some question of what the bezel's like. I don't know if you can hear that. It's a nice bezel. Hope it focuses. Sometimes my camera doesn't focus at this angle. Can you hear that? And the thing about Seiko is there's so many modders out there they can mod that. 
that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. If I, get, I might get a couple more others that I could just keep from modding. I won't mod this one, but I'm actually pretty, uh, pretty stoked with this. I was on the fence of which one to order, so I ordered both. <laughs> and then, and then when the, when the band's coming tomorrow, I'll do another video showing the Islander, the Archer, and the Seiko band. Uh, they screwed up and lost the Seiko. The Seiko band was running late. They didn't lose it. It was running late. Uh, I bought that from Amazon, but I bought the Islander from Island Watch, and of course, Island was very quick. I thought he act it was actually here early. Oh, another thing I noticed too. Did I get a? Okay, wait a minute. I'm wondering here, did I get a? Yeah, the band looks pretty. That's that bezel looks pretty straight on the money. I don't know if you can see that. But does that does that look straight? Does that look straight or a little off? Some guys are wondering if, if they got a correct bezel or not. It's it's I'm not really too concerned with it, but does that look? I don't know if that looks like it's straight up and down or not. I'm not concerned with it. It looks pretty straight to me though. Yeah, I think I'm like I think I'm gonna like this. Uh, I've been wearing a, an Apple iWatch for the last you know year or so, but I think going back to a mechanical is gonna be you know nice. I kind of wanted to just go back to a mechanical, back to a a a, a, a auto, and I might explore some of the sun the uh, solar drive drive analogs too. That are uh, you know like set it and forget it types. I might actually look into maybe one of those. I've you know, but I, I like I like autos, and uh, you know, and the iWatch is good too. Uh, one thing I gotta know is I gotta take it out of the case and throw it on the charger, and then it's I have I have like several of these that I pick every night and change. But I wanted a couple good of just analog autos that I can enjoy every day. So let me just give a good look here. It was kind of nice too. Is you, is I can show the back off a little more with the with the uh, with the band. What worried me was the was the embossing here. Uh, yeah, here's the finishing on the back. Yeah. Okay. This is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking at Seiko off and on through the years and. And I always said if I get a, a Japanese line, I would love to have a Seiko. And I love my Orient. I, I was going to buy my Orient and use it as a beater. And it was just too beautiful to beat. But I might use these as everyday wares. Prince right off the bat here has a line down the center of it. Has a line. So there's the... Okay, so this one here kind of comes up on the edges here. Okay. Hope I got the right one. So this this will be more of a of a watch band that kind of comes down along the sides. So pull this out here has a uh, kind of a ridged type of uh, inside to it. So I kind of like I kind of like the way the Archer kind of sits a little bit. You know the way it kind of closes down. Like at the end of the day, I could put the watch down. It lays flat. This may actually have to be kind of laid on its side because it'll be wanting to kind of come up. So anyways. This is why they say that oh, it comes with two pins too. That's what's nice. So I got two pins. So the Archer has a clasp here that opens up. So I just basically use my fingernail to open that up. That's kind of what I, what's cool about them things. Okay, there's the first the top one. I guess that's it. I guess it goes on like, is that how it goes on like that? Is that how it goes on like that? Hmm, I don't know. How long will that stay on? Will it stay on there securely? Move these around, make sure I can keep them in there. Yeah, I feel like they're on there. Okay. Alright, so. Get 
take this watch off, put this one on. See, so yeah, it sits now. See? Go flat. Now it has that molded type of fit to it. So far, it feels real comfy, though. But uh, I like kind of like that oval style. Yeah, that's very comfortable. Okay, nice. Yeah, extremely comfortable. Wow, <laughs> that's actually pretty nice. Nice. It doesn't feel like it's swaying or anything like that. Feels pretty. Uh, feels pretty good. Yeah. And this piece goes to the end right here. I mean, I probably could do is put another one down here if I wanted to, but that does, seems like it's not moving anywhere. It's holding pretty well. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this so far. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's the uh, Islander band for the Seiko. Okay. All right, guys. So I figured eventually I meant, meant to just to do a quick unboxing, showing everything. But the new Seiko came in the day I was going to come out, wrap this, give a report on how the watch was going. And so I forget, oh, yeah, my band's in there. So I decided to go ahead and try out the band at the same time and uh, see how it goes. So like see, that's what they say. It's a band monster. They call it a band monster because you have drilled out lugs and you can go in with a with a pin, push those points out easily and change your bands easily. So I got the Archer bands. I got this band. And then of course I can take this off of here and switch it over to here every so often and run a Seiko band. Close up look at the Islander strap here, see what it looks like. See the wider uh, clasp, wider eyelets. The uh, kind of a diagonal uh, texturization. All right, guys. So don't worry about the haters. Just let the haters worry about you. See you on the next one.